Hey, what's up guys? So I get a lot of questions on med kits and toolkits and different ways that people go about uh, doing and kind of taking care of their equipment, including themselves. And today we're gonna go over just a toolkit that I use. Now, uh, whenever traveling or at the range or teaching locally, I usually have this kit with me because people end up needing stuff. Now, this started out as just uh, fix-it sticks, right? They have a general purpose or like their lowest tier package that you can get in a pouch. And I started out with one of theirs. Um, I, I bought it, realized uh, there were some parts that I needed more, and I went ahead and purchased some extra things and started adding things through the years um of needing or what i needed for the actual pouch and tools that i needed on hand so starting out like it's just a fix it sticks pouch here um, with one of their little magnetic um little velcro panels it's a really interesting tool to use as magnets for this kind of stuff because i can rip this off put it down and now every part that i take off i can't lose because it's or if it's at least something that'll stick to a magnet, um, it'll, it'll go ahead and go through that. So I don't have to worry about it rolling off and disappearing. Otherwise, I highly recommend some kind of tray or, or something so that you don't lose all your, your little parts. Um, the amount of cotter pins out there on the range that are missing um, without a home are immense. So going through it, uh, very simply uh, inside the pouch, and, and you can see it kind of loses its stuff every once in a while, things fall out, things kind of move out of its place or out of their places. Just over time, uh, they stop holding everything. So especially something that's a little bit more um, long or something that'll bump into something, they, they start getting a little loose. So just something, something to pay attention to with all the fix-it sticks, uh, little rubber holders. Now, <clears throat> the, the kit originally came with just the torque wrenches, these little um, uh, Allen keys and Torx pieces, um, a flathead and a Phillips head, and that was it pretty much, and the T-handle obviously. Um, from there, I started getting into more things that I needed. Uh, so starting out, you know, every once in a while, I can't mess with any kind of equipment or any threaded stuff without cleaning the threads. So I cut a toothbrush or one of the cleaning toothbrushes and, uh, and actually went ahead and, and shoved that in here. So that's something I use in here that's actually pretty useful and I use pretty often. <clears throat> the T-handle is something they come with. I really like their, their design of T-handle. Uh, it'll accept a bit in all three sides and also spins off this little black piece here. Really useful, Fix and Six did a good job on that little T-handle in my opinion. Oh, it also came with this extender. Um, this is also kind of nice for those of you that work on bolt action rifles on the action screws. These fit, the, I, I've actually not found an action screw that doesn't fit, uh, but you know, some people you know, may be using something funky, but that's an action screw, is, or it's perfect for the action screws. Then getting in here, uh, a couple additions I made to, uh, to the actual bits. Uh, was was a, a whole set of Torx and the reason for that is like the Torx bits can fit in Allen keys and they can fit in Torx stuff so it was kind of double duty um, but what, what I did was I went ahead and I also added a front sight tool for Glocks and a punch that I could use for Glocks or any other real you know firearms related thing. So I also added the tools that I would need for like a Glock or fixing or taking apart a Glock. Now getting away from all the original parts which you can find on their website, um, they just have torques at different um, different specs for inch pounds. Um, and it's really useful to have because when you're putting things together, you need a little bit more understanding of what you're doing torque wise so that you can make it more repeatable. So highly recommend some kind of torque screws or torque bits. Back here is where it starts to get a little interesting and, and kind of different. Um, this is where I added everything that's in here on this side. So like I said, I added to the bits and I got a whole Torx set, right? A, a set of all the bits and I think it goes from like four or five, let me see. Yeah, Torx four all the way to like Torx 20 or something. 
I'm, not, I'm sorry, Torx 40. So I, I like having the, the round a bit or like all the bits because like I said, these will fit in Allen keys and you can still work some Allen keys with them, but uh, you can't do the opposite with an Allen key into a Torx. So that's something I added to this kit. Something else I added was one of the self-leveling kits from Arasaka, right? Their self-leveling leveling kits for scopes and stuff are really useful. Um, if you mount scopes at all, these can be really, really um, intuitive. Uh, if, if they look weird to you right here, make sure you look on their website and see how they're used. But very, very cool piece of equipment that uh, I like a lot and I like having in my little kit here. Um, another one is I have some extra screws for some of my scope mounts. Well, this is the, the screws that go to like a uh, spur mount, you know, because they come with like a billion extras. So I, I just kept them in here just in case. I also keep some blue Loctite. So nothing too fancy like everybody's seen before, blue Loctite, nothing, nothing out of this world. But I like having some because people need it every once in a while. I have a bubble level that Fix-It Sticks makes and the opposite bubble level, the magnetic part. So there's one that attaches to pick and one that goes magnetic so I can double check my work when I'm leveling a scope. And then I also have the leveling, um, I guess you can call them spurs or whatever, that uh, the spur mount actually takes. So every spur mount out there has a little wedge in it that kind of looks like this in the actual mount. And you could slide these up and actually level your own scope with your own mount. So I like having these for those. Um, they do get a little banged up here and there or scratched. When they start getting damaged, I go ahead and get rid of them and the next spur mount I get that comes with them, I'll go ahead and put it in here. But I'll add, I added that to it. So the, the last thing I have is a couple small Allen keys that are Allen wrenches um, that are actually meant for my scopes, for the, the scope caps, and to make sure that those scopes are um, zeroed out or floated properly, I use these instead of a bit. Uh, but doesn't say you can't use the bit. I just wouldn't use my T-handle. So when you go to zero out a scope, you don't want to put one of these bits in the T-handle and then just torque that thing. It doesn't need that much uh, pressure. So I normally will either use one of these or just take the bit in my fingers and tighten it that way. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to overdo it, and it's just brass, so you can dent it or or de deform it very easily. So guys, this is this is a simple little you know, dump of my little pouch that I take to the range and I also take on trips. So whenever I need to either adjust, fix, or <clears throat> go ahead and remount anything that I use on a normal basis, this can handle it. Um, everybody's kit's going to be different. Um, I, I wouldn't copy mine per se because you may have different needs. Like you may not need spur mount pieces. Uh, you may need other things, right? If you're using a 2011 or 1911, you may need one of those tools for those kind of things. But this is what I use, guys. Hopefully it was uh, it was useful to you to see it. And just because I get questions on it pretty often, I figured I'd show it. Now, on top of this, something else I do or, or keep on me all the time at the range, and it's on my belt. So obviously it sits right in front of my holster. I keep a pouch here. And if you've never seen this pouch, like in my little videos and stuff, it also has tools in it. So right now I have the Nano 1 and the Nano 2 little little tiny um, adjusters for scopes or for optics uh, and lasers. Very, very useful little tool. I like having these. These are fantastic. These two right here cover everything I own. So from Hall Suns to Steiners to aim points to everything. So very useful uh, to have the Nano 1 and Nano 2. Um, at the filming of this, the Nano 2 isn't available yet, so hopefully it'll come out soon. Um, and I keep those with a little beaner, or carabiner, no offense to beaners, uh, <laughs> on my pouch here. So I can unclip it and hand it off to people. I also keep a Gerber, right? And this is just one I got issued a long time ago. So since it's still alive, I use it. And then in here, I also have a big tech's um, little lens cloth, you know, for lenses, and then also some spare ear pro, right? And a 
good old foamies. So just something something to pay attention to. You know what you're carrying on you is what you're gonna what you're gonna have. So ha making sure you have the equipment that you can do quick adjustments, quick f fixes here and there, uh, depending on what you're doing. And uh, and you never know what you're gonna need. So that stuff on hand is really useful. The fix it sticks pouch, like I said, is for like you know, bigger things or more intricate things that I need some adjustment on or tightening screws or fixing scopes or mounting scopes, whatever it is. But I tend to f use this pouch almost every single range trip or, uh, or help people with their, their optics and things like that. So hope this helped guys. Uh, if you have any questions, put them below and I'll try to get them as soon as I can. And, uh, yeah, take care.